You might have seen this headline from a while back that said a supervolcano could erupt in 2025 and cause an ice age. Now is it time to start worrying? Or is it just fear-mongering? Let's have a look. This study was published last year in the journal Quaternary Science Reviews. It's a review which means they didn't conduct their own new research, but summarized what's known about past super-eruptions and used that to make predictions. The authors say that there are three supervolcanoes that may erupt soon, one of which is the Yellowstone supervolcano in the United States. So let's first talk about how likely an eruption at Yellowstone is, and then we can talk about what would happen if it did erupt. So first things first, Yellowstone does not just consist of one volcano, but is actually a supervolcano with three different calderas, which are basically large craters left over from earlier eruptions. It's this one in the middle, the so-called magma chamber, which researchers are most concerned about. The magma chamber is about 45 by 30 miles across. That's about the size of Los Angeles. Yellowstone has been very active in the past. There have been several periods where it erupted almost constantly for hundreds of thousands of years. But these periods alternate with more quiescent phases where it doesn't seem to do much at all. We don't know exactly when these phases switch because, well, it happened before humans existed, but looking at the geological record helps us to estimate how long we might have until the next big eruption. In the past, the biggest eruptions were about 2 million, 1.3 million, and 640,000 years ago. These eruptions had a volcanic explosivity index of 8, which is the highest number on the VEI scale. The VEI is a logarithmic scale where each level above zero is 10 times more powerful than the previous one, so a VEI-8 eruption is way more violent than a VEI-7. You might have heard of Krakatoa's eruption in 1883. That was a VEI-6 and devastated nearby islands. Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines had a VEI-6 eruption in 1991, which ejected more than 10 billion cubic feet of ash into the atmosphere. That's enough to bury the entire state of New York under a foot of ash. The VEI-6 eruption of Novorupta in Alaska in 1912 is considered to be the largest of the 20th century. It ejected 3.6 cubic miles of ash into the air. By comparison, the VEI-8 eruptions of Yellowstone ejected more than 2,300 cubic miles of material. That's about a third of all the ash and pumice that was erupted by all volcanoes worldwide during the 20th century combined. A VEI-8 eruption is thus truly catastrophic. It's very difficult to measure the full impact of such an event because there's so much destruction, so it's hard to compare different eruptions, but it's thought that the death toll would easily run into the millions. Well, there's also the issue with climate change. Sulfur dioxide is released together with the ash and gases containing hydrogen sulfide, carbon monoxide and water vapour. The amount of sulfur dioxide alone in the 1912 eruption of Novorupta was enough to create a global haze that dimmed sunlight for years. So eruptions of this size have the potential to influence global temperatures for many years. For all of this to happen at Yellowstone, however, the magma chamber would have to fill up again. Unfortunately, scientists think that's already happening. In the past decade, the magma chamber has filled up by about 50%. They say it'll take another 10,000 years to fill up completely, but that's just an average estimate based on past behavior. The reality could be quite different. Researchers aren't sure if the filling process accelerates as the chamber gets fuller, which would mean we might have to wait far less long for the next eruption. The authors of the 2022 paper now say that it could fill up in just 100 years. Then again, they cite other studies, saying it might also take 10,000 years. And since nobody knows what's going on inside the planet, I guess we can only take these predictions with a grain of salt. The point is that the next eruption could happen at any time. If it did, we'd need to start worrying about what happens next. So let's have a look at that. Here's a list of all the worst things that could happen if Yellowstone were to erupt. Yes, there would be a huge explosion and a lot of people would die. But honestly, that's kind of the best-case scenario compared to some of the other stuff on this list. There would be pyroclastic flows, lahars and floods. Pyroclastic flows are fast-moving currents of hot gas and solid matter 
that rush down the slopes of a volcano. Lahars are volcanic mud flows. Both would cause severe damage and loss of life in the surrounding area. And even if you survived that, you'd still have to deal with the fact that the eruption of Yellowstone would also cause enormous floods. You see, the weight of all that ash and rock would create a huge wave that spreads out over a vast area. The nearest big cities are Jackson, Wyoming, and West Yellowstone, Montana, which are about 50 miles away from the park. These cities would be severely impacted, but the wave would keep on going. Geologists estimate that the wave would travel all the way to the Gulf of Mexico, destroying everything in its path. In other words, if you live anywhere near a river that drains into the Gulf, pack your bags and move away. And I haven't even talked about the ash yet. The ash cloud would spread around the entire globe and cause crop failures and famine. This effect would be felt strongest in North America, but nobody would escape the fallout. And speaking of fallout, the ash cloud would also block sunlight and cause an ice age. Depending on the eruption strength, the resulting ice age could last between 500 and 1,000 years. This would destroy agriculture and lead to societal collapse. Even if you survived all of this, you'd still have to deal with the toxic fallout for the rest of your life. Volcanic ash contains a lot of dangerous chemicals like arsenic, mercury, and lead. If inhaled, these toxins can cause cancer and other respiratory diseases. Survivors of the initial blast would be exposed to high levels of radiation for the rest of their lives. But maybe we don't need to worry about all this after all. Some experts argue that if it did erupt, the impact wouldn't be nearly as bad as predicted. First of all, they say, it probably wouldn't be as big as a VEI-8 eruption. Yellowstone hasn't produced many VEI-8 eruptions in the past, so maybe it doesn't do that anymore. And even if it did, they say the consequences wouldn't be nearly as dramatic as previously thought. The reason for this is that the magma chambers at Yellowstone contain so much water that the magma can't reach the surface. It gets trapped underground, and the pressure builds up until it erupts. But the amount of magma is nowhere near as much as originally thought. They say the steam explosions that result from the magma hitting groundwater would be harmless on their own. But if it starts raining afterwards, the water would wash the ash into rivers and create lahars. These lahars would be disastrous for the surrounding area. But the rest of the damage would be limited because the ash cloud wouldn't get nearly as big as previously thought. The Ice Age scenario would probably not happen either, because computer simulations show that the global temperature change wouldn't be significant. In other words, it might not be the end of the world, but who wants to take the risk? Personally, I'm moving to New Zealand. Science is great, but sometimes it can be difficult to keep track of it. If you feel that way, you're not alone. That's why a friend and I started a newsletter that gives you a monthly summary of the most important news in science and technology. Each issue is beautifully written and free. It takes you just a couple of minutes to read and it'll keep you up to date on everything that matters. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.